So we begin our celebration of the fifth Sunday of Easter and Mother's Day in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirits. spirits. We gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us first call to mind our sins and ask our Heavenly Father for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, your almighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to our everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
In Jerusalem, at the time of Christ, some Jewish people spoke Greek. Others spoke Aramaic, and each group went to its own synagogue. It appears that the apostles were among those who spoke Aramaic. In today's reading, we will hear some of the problems this created in the Christian community and how these were addressed. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of disciples and they said, it's not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. The proposal was accepted to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. And thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. the first letter of Peter was written to a Christian community that felt alienated from their pagan neighbors. Today the author reminds them that they belong to a special group of people, the people of God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. 
and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, the word of the Lord. disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do, not, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Again, welcome to the celebration of the liturgy, and also in particular as we celebrate Mother's Day, which will be quite different uh, during this pandemic. But I hope that we tell our mothers, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers, stepmothers, step-grandmothers, uh, how much we do appreciate to them. And it is a Catholic custom, as I have seen over many years, of going to the cemeteries. Uh, to place flowers on the graves of our deceased parents and also grandparents. 
So uh, keep those traditions up. And, um, and to all of our mothers, uh, we wish you a very blessed Mother's Day. I hope you enjoy uh, your day with your family at home. And always uh, remember in your hearts, again, those who have gone before us in the sign of faith. There was an author, Temple Bailey, back in 1933, wrote a beautiful story called A Mother's Journey. I have used it at, uh, at funeral masses and at particular masses in the church so when it was appropriate, but it's a, a beautiful story. And as I read this story, I just invite you at your homes to just close your eyes and listen. The young mother set her foot on the path of life. Is this the long way? asked the young mother as she set her foot on the path of life. And the guy told her, yes, the way is hard and you will be old before you reach the end of it, but I guarantee you the end will be better than the beginning. So the young mother was happy and she could not believe that anything could be better than these years. So she played with her children. She fed them and bathed them, taught them how to tie their shoes, ride a bike, reminded them to feed the dog and to do their homework, and brush their teeth. The sun shone on them and the young mother cried, nothing will ever be lovelier than this. And then the nights came and the storms and the path was sometimes dark and the children shook with fear and cold, but the mother drew them close to her and covered them with her mantle. The children said, Mom, we're not afraid because you are always near and no harm can come to us when we're with you. The morning came and then there was a hill ahead and the children climbed, but they grew weary and the mother was also weary. But at all times, she said to her children, just a little more patience and we will get there. So the children climbed and as they climbed, they learned to weather the storms of life. And with this, she gave them strength to face the world. Year after year, she showed them compassion, understanding, hope. But most of all, she showed them unconditional love. And when they reached the top, they said, Mom, we could have not done it without you. And when the mother lay down that night, she said, This is a better day than the last. For today, my children have learned fortitude in the face of adversity. Yesterday, I taught them strength. Tomorrow, I will give them courage. So the next day came, but brought strange clouds that darkened the earth with war, hatred, and evil. Her children stumbled and groped through the hall walls of darkness. But the mother said, my dear children, look in, in, with your eyes into the heavens and see the brilliant light beyond the clouds around us of darkness. And the children looked beyond the clouds and they saw an everlasting glory, a glory that guided them away from the darkness and into the light. And the mother again said, this day is the best day than other days. For today I have shown my children the very face of God. The days went on, the weeks and the months and then the years. The mother grew old and she became a little bent. But her children were strong and tall and walked with courage. And the mother, when she lay down at night, looked up into the stars and said, This is a better day than the last, for my children have learned so much, and now they're passing these traits to their own children. And when the way became rough for her, they lifted her and gave her strength, just as she had given them hers. One day they came to a hill. And beyond the hill they could see a shining road with golden gates flung wide. The mother turned to her children and said, I have reached the end of my journey, and now I know that the end is better than the beginning. For my children now can walk with dignity and pride, 
with their heads held high, and so can their children after them. The children said, You will always walk with us, Mom, even when you have gone through the gates. They stood and watched her as she walked through the gates alone, and the gates closed after her. They said, We cannot see her, but she is always with us. For my friends, a mother is more than a memory. She is a living presence. Your mother is always with you. She is the whisper of the leaves as you walk down the street. She's the smell of certain foods you remember, flowers you pick, and the perfume that she wore. She's the cool hand on your brow when you're not feeling well. She's your breath in the air on a cold winter's day. She is the smell of bleach in your white, clean socks. She is the sound of the rain that lulls you to sleep, the colors of the rainbow. She is your birthday morning. For your mother lives inside your laughter, and she is crystallized in every teardrop. A mother shows through everything and every emotion, happiness, sadness, fear, jealousy, love, hate, anger, helplessness, excitement, joy, and sorrow, and all the while hoping and praying that you will only know the good things in life that she passed on to you. My friends, your mother is the place where you came from. She is your first home. She is the map that you follow with every step you take. She is your first love and your first friend, and sometimes your first enemy. But nothing on earth can separate you, not time, not space, and not even death. When our Lord hung upon the cross, and John and his mother were there, and his mother was wailing and weeping, seeing her son crucified, the one thing that he wanted to make sure that was that she was taken care of. And she looked down and she, he looked down at John, the beloved disciple, and said, said, Son, behold your mother, and woman, behold your son. Even with him suffering, he loved his mother, and he wanted to make sure that she was taken care of. So on this day, we honor all of our mothers, and we say, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and give you his peace. And to all of our deceased mothers and grandmothers, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Remember to love your mother and to say the words, I love you. At this moment in the month of May, we honor Mary, the mother of God. And today we will sing a hymn for her and crown her at this mass. <laughs> Together let us profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions before our loving Father. Our response to the petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the Church of Cleveland, May the Holy Spirit enlighten and inspire the leaders of our church until a new shepherd for our diocese is named. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our military, police officers, firefighters, and first responders, medical personnel, and all service employees, may God bless them with wisdom, strength, and safety as they continue to provide an invaluable service to us, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those who are tirelessly working to find a treatment and a cure for COVID-19, may God give them the knowledge and tools necessary to achieve this goal, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For all mothers, including those who are with child. May they be appreciated and supported by their loved ones, and may they realize and enjoy the many blessings of motherhood. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For Holy Family Parish, may our hearts be filled with peace that only Christ can offer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those who have died, May they enjoy the splendor of their heavenly home. We pray in particular for Carol Mary King, for the mass intentions of this weekend, for Henry and Cecilia Bozak, for Frank and Ann Taliski, for all the Mother's Day intentions, and the living and deceased of Holy Family Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. And we also pray as this virus has been continuing, people have found themselves in financial trouble, those who cannot meet their bills, their mortgage, their car payments. During this time, I hope that we know our neighbors, know what they are going through, and to give them our love and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And anyone who is suffering emotional distress during this time, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. And Lord, we ask you to hear all of our prayers and petitions, for we place them in the loving hands of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is our loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you and yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For Jesus never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. For he is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they all acclaim. saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, the Church of Cleveland, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the gap between God and his people. The Jewish people had awesome names for God. El, Elohim, Yahweh, the derivative Jehovah. But Jesus used the very particular word in his native language, Abba, which tender, which really is the tender word for a parent, daddy. So on this Mother's Day, let us remember our mothers who comforted us, who held us in her arms who guided us all through our life, who loved us unconditionally. And that's what Jesus wanted us to have, that image of God with us as a beloved, tender parent. So in his spirit, we offer to Abba, our Father, the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our risen Lord be with us always. And with your spirit. We offer an appropriate sign of peace. by this your most holy body and blood from all of our sins and from all of our evil. Keep us always faithful to your teachings, and Lord, never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those that you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our announcements for today, the Catholic bishops of Ohio have extended the temporary suspension of all publicly celebrated Masses until May 29, 2020. The church is open for personal devotions from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily and from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on weekends. Please only use the pews that are not roped off. Follow social distancing requirements in addition to no more than 10 people present in the church. Wash and sanitize hands and do not enter if ill. The parish office is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon to purchase script gift cards, mass intentions, or to drop off offertory envelopes. There is also a secure mail slot located in the brick wall to the right as you approach the parish office entrance, which can be used at any time. Thank you to all our parishioners who have been able to drop off our mail in your offertory envelopes, and to those who have signed up for automated giving or online giving. Please consider if you are able to sign up for automated giving or online giving, we appreciate those of you who have been able to keep up with your offertory donations. And just a reminder that all activities are canceled. Holy Family School, PSR, and Day School are closed. Please refer to our website for ongoing updates. May the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May his blessing come upon you, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed weekend and a blessed Mother's Day to all of you. God bless you.